Hello and welcome to the third video in this series. So in this video we're going to be talking about the specifics behind the reflection materials, how they handle materials, how they capture their material, the reflections, and uh, generally how to play around with the parameters to get exactly what we want. So one thing we have to remember, if you open the scene, there, there is going to be this green value across all of our reflection stuff and that's because we haven't generated a texture target yet. So I'm going to move this around a bit and now you can see I've created a texture target and now this cube map is being applied to our reflections across all of these materials. So they're all sharing this one texture target. If I was to open up one of these parameters I can have multiple cube maps and that would be done here in the capture. So I could drag whatever texture I want. I can even use a static cube map and drop it straight into here. So let's talk about the captures real quick. So this texture is looking for all sorts of really cool stuff, including HDRI values. So the HDR values are looking for what's bright, the sun, the sky, reflections around the scene, everything like that. And this is what's allowing us to use really cool looking reflections, which includes stuff like really bright sunspots which affect the really cool post-processed effects in UE4 and gives us stuff like Fresnel. So this texture is what's driving all of these reflections. So let's dive into one of the actual materials real quick and take a look at what I'm going on about. So in the main materials, and this is the car paint material, we have our values for different layers all broken up into segments, essentially. We have the base coat down here. We have a metallic layer. We have our clear coat layer. And then a rust layer on top of that. So the most important thing here that we have to understand is the reflections capture. is all being driven right here and also with a corresponding mask. So there's a masking system which is looking for the light from our texture, render texture, and it's looking for what's bright. Like the sun is bright, yes. Let's duplicate that, that value over and over and over again so we get really nice highlights. Uh, what's dark? Well, let's add that in. We'll add a Fresnel to that. So this system is controlling the basically um, the values of our clear coat. And the clear coat is really being driven by our texture right here. And it's got a couple of things added to it, like uh, tangent to world. This is affecting normal maps based off of the UVs here, which is really cool. So it gives us control over stuff like um, we, we get finer control over the normals of the clear coat, which is something that um, was a little bit tricky to figure out. So, knowing what we do now, which is that we have a clear coat, which is being transposed on top of the metallic and base coat, we can start playing around with the parameters in one of these instances. So I'm going to jump straight down into reflection. I can see there's a couple different segments here. There's reflection. So this is handling just the texture for the reflections and stuff like uh, added highlight, grunge, Fresnel power. We have the normals, so this is affecting the surface normals of the clear coat. And then we have a clear coat masking system for the reflections. So let's go by this one by one. Reflection. Reflection amount at the very top. This is giving you an overall reflection amount. So if I was to drag this down to zero, we have no reflections. If I was to pull this up past one, this is where things start getting a little tricky. So past one means that this is furthest away from correct in most environments. One is basically the fullest value you're ever going to have to go to. If you want to start boosting reflections, I recommend you start doing that within the add highlight and then uh, down here, which we'll talk about in a moment. So 
let's talk about added highlights. So in this system, in the main uh, UE4's um, sky system, which is included, we have a really cool system which is handling emissives coming out of the sun and then the sky as well. So this is helping looking for what's most bright and what's not most bright. So the added highlight is basically just going to add uh, the highest of the highlights. So if we start dragging this up, you can see that starts to include the clouds at some point, but it's also the sun. If I was to set this to zero, it's actually going to make our sun much less bright. And it's not selling it as well. So I like to leave this at about a 0.5. It gives us a nice little bit of glint. Or not glint, but a uh, nice little bit of bloom. And it looks generally pretty good. The next thing we can look at is the power for that. So this power is actually the contrast of what is bright, what is not bright. So a little bit more finer controls. Clear coat opacity. This is basically changing the overall reflections in a separate way. So if I was to bring this down to zero, it's giving me basically full opacity. And this is one of the ways that we go about making chrome. If you start bringing this up past one, we start getting a very thin layer of clear coat. And what that means is that based on the Fresnel, the, the highlights are going to recede to the end, except for our brightest of the bright, which is still going to be added. You can also change things like the Fresnel power. Very useful for getting in your exact values. And then the grunge here. So this is adding grunge based off of a mask onto the actual masking system of the reflections. So if I pull this up, you'll start to see that it's ref it's changing the uh, surface reflections here. You can also have control over the contrast. And then the next thing we could look at is the repeat on that grunge can be driven by this value. And generally, there's no surface that's perfectly clean, so it's nice to have a little bit of grunge, even if it's just something that no one would ever really notice. Gives a little bit of definition to our clear coat. By default, it's set to zero. We can also change reflection color. So this is just adding a tint to the reflection values. And you can get some pretty interesting looking stuff. This is most useful when we're doing chrome, different color chrome, or anodized aluminums and stuff. All right, and the next thing we have is the normal maps. So we have a custom normal map, just like in the other materials. I can include that. And like I said earlier, this is best for high poly baked information from your normal maps being applied to the entire surface. So this is changing all layers as and including the, uh, the clear coat. So you can also change the repeat on that, like in the other ones. And of course the value. And then we have orange peel just like before. Of course, this is all being driven through the reflection captures. So it's driven slightly differently than the other way, the PBR correct materials. And then we have the masking system. So this is uh, helping our reflections based off the actual masking system. So we can bring the mask up and down just as before. Sometimes it's nice to work in a constructive method, so you put in your base, and then you add your flake, and then you add your reflections on top of that. You can also put in your own reflections. So what I like to do is create a an ambient occlusion map and throw that into my reflections, and that'll help dial down reflections based off of uh, where things would be dark, so actual object reflections, which we can't get because this is using a a cube map so if you want actual object reflections to be toned down somewhat I would use an ambient occlusion right here and we can start playing around with that a little bit I'll just bring this value up and you can see that it's actually getting darker 
I can even pull up the, uh, well, you can see already how it's starting to affect the surface. Generally, these uh, textures don't really sell it as well, but the next thing we can look at is the reflection mask repeat. So if we wanted to pull up the repeat value on this, we can totally do that. And we also have these values right here, which are pretty important if you're working in uh, more advanced uh, skylight setups. So this is using UE4's default setup. But if you're using an HDRI image, uh, you can play around with these values. So the maximum reflection value, if you start pulling this up, you'll start to see that now we're getting kind of uh, blown out reflections. And you can see that in the scene. So you have to be a little bit careful when playing around with these. You also have a minimum value which you can play around with. And we also have the Fresnel. So this is the actual Fresnel of your reflections. So at F0, uh, Fresnel 0, which is what, when you're looking perfectly perpendicular to your object, uh, that would be this value right here, which is set 2.02%. So that would be 0.2%. Uh, and then, of course, at the very end of the uh, spectrum, we have a full one. But if you wanted to pull this up, you can start playing around with the reflections in that way. And then let's take a look at a couple other things which make this model a little bit more special than the other model. And that would be the subsurface glint. So I'm going to go... I'm going to jump up to the uh, flake right up here. And I'm going to play around with scale and full flake. So remember, full flake is basically getting rid of your base coat by adding just the normal map on top of this metallic layer. So if we pull this up to one, our base coat basically just disappears. And now all we see is flake. And this flake is being driven by the normal map. So by default, the stock normal map is a 40, uh, I'm sorry, 2048. If you wanted a little bit higher resolution or a little bit lower resolution based on your needs, you can always come into the textures and grab small, throw that on. You see the resolution is lower, but at a distance, it still looks pretty good. If you're going to be jamming your camera and face right up on the uh, surface, you can throw in the high, the 4096, and you can see that that gives you much higher quality uh, flake data. So now we don't have this base color affecting anything. We can actually play around with the flake color and that will give us our full value colors. And then if we were going to do something like, I don't know, like a gray metallic paint, you can start pulling this down. You can see right away it is very, very easy to start getting in some interesting looking surface types. The really interesting thing is the flake bump power. So as you can see, we're getting under, we're getting glint values underneath the clear coat. And that's what is helping sell this material in motion. You can see that there's subsurface detail there. So if I was to pull up this value even further, you can see that it's really starting to pop. You have to be a little bit careful not to overblow this, otherwise it's going to start looking a little bit strange. Uh, generally a 0.3 is going to give you the best of both worlds. And you can also play around with the roughness, kind of dial in the right look. If you, uh, oops, uh, that back to one, if you lower the roughness, you can increase the bump power. But you start running into some problems with increased highlighting details up close. So once again, it's just something that you have to play around with to get the right look. But all the power of the tools are here, which allows you to get the exact look which you're going for. Alright, so that was basically 
The only big differences in between this system and the standard reflections models, and the takeaway from this portion is that this model using these reflections gives you subsurface details. On the normal reflections model, this glint is impossible to achieve. So this material looks really, really nice up close. And of course, in the real world, in our editor, it's looking pretty, 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 pretty. All right, so the carbon fiber and glass work in very similar methods. If I grab one of those real quick. I can see that the carbon fiber once again has normal map data. So it has subsurface reflection qualities, which is really, really cool. And you can play around with the carbon fiber normal map values, which will help sell this a little bit more. You can also play around with the metallic values in the repeat and the roughness. Dial in the exact look that you're going for. And you can see the reflections are being handled in the same exact way. And of course, we still re uh, retain the color properties of everything else. One last thing I'm going to do is affect the normal map value of the carbon fiber. Pull it down a little bit more. You can see straight away we start getting a much different looking carbon fiber. All right, so that's going to conclude this video. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how to use the vertex color to drive our rust system. All right, so I'll see you next in that video.